Hello, hello. Welcome back to my YouTube channel in Perfectly Perfect True Crime and More with Jay Diaz and of course Lola. She's so sick of me picking her up. Look at it. So we just wanted to do another video, of course, on Summer Wells, but it is about Jose Roman who was said to have lived at the Wells house and could be in connection, possibly allegedly, with something to do with Summer's disappearance. So before I get into today's video, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Jessica. I'm so thankful to have you here. Uh, please like this video if you, if you like it. Share it if you find it shareable, and please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. I've noticed some people getting unsubscribed, so just check to make sure you are still subscribed, and if you aren't, please subscribe. Also ring the notif notification bell to all, and then that way you are notified anytime I post on my channel. So thank you so much for being here. And I wanted to talk about Jose, and he had an interview. And Jose was said to have been staying at the Wells property, and um, he has a an affiliation to Andrew Hiltz, who is Hunter's father. And it's like a huge nightmare, it really. So this is kind of the breakdown of that. How jose got to candace wells house so they they meeting andrew andrew's brother their best friend um and jose were said to be coming down to stay in or live in tennessee from new york and their plans fell through i guess where they were going to live fell through so they went to tennessee unpacked a u-haul into a storage unit now, nobody knows why they would do that, because if you have a home, you would think you would put your stuff in there, but no. So they had to go back and pack up the whole U-Haul and then drive back to New York. Well, in that time, Jose, um, who was seeing Andrew's baby mom, which is Allie, so they were hooking up. And I guess something happened, and now Candace and Allie were very good friends at one point, but due to, I guess, Candace trying to kick it to Jose, um, that ruined the relationship for Allie and Candace because then now they're both fighting over Jose. So um, I'm not really sure exactly what happened, but there was no place for at at the time when Allie was with Jose, there was no place for him to stay. So Allie asked Candace if Jose could stay at her house for a while, and she said yes. So they kind of, you know, not moved him in. I guess he didn't really have that much stuff, or maybe he did have his things that he was planning on moving to Tennessee with. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that went or what he put in the house, if anything, but... He started staying at the Wells. He was not paying rent. He was not, you know, doing anything to help there. He was just kind of couch surfing and bitching a lot about, you know, the Wells house being a mess and them not having a door on the bathroom. Also a lot of, okay, this is under the Fair Use Act. I am going to put out a trigger warning. Uh, this is all allegedly, in my opinion, none of this is factual. This is based on what I've seen and the things I've heard. So, um, also, Candace was said to have been maybe having an inappropriate relationship with Jose. <coughs> Sorry. And Don was not actually living on Ben Hill Road at the time. He had actually left to go to Utah with his oldest son, Josie. And nobody's really kind of sure why that is. Um, Jose was said to have started staying with the Wells in October of 2021. And his account, he said that he lived with the Wells for six months. Um, but most people are saying that he was only there from four to six weeks. So I'm not really sure how the discrepancy happened. Uh, 
in such a big way, like so many, you know, months off, but who really knows? Um, he also made a lot of comments saying that Candace and Hunter were having sex, an inappropriate relationship. She, he saw it happen. Um, he also said that he saw other sexual, um, you know, allegations happen. And he was very interested in like people's virginity and sexuality and like kind of putting their business out there, which I found kind of weird. Um, and if you saw an inappropriate relationship with a child and an adult and you said nothing, you are also just as much accountable as the person doing it. You know what I mean? So if I were him, I would never have said that. And, um, you know, he just made a lot of, um, statements about summer, how, you know, um, that basically Candace was no helicopter mom. She wasn't ever really there much. Um, Summer kind of had free reign of the yard, the property. And many times they had to go looking for her to bring her home at night. And, um, you know, so he was just saying like a whole bunch of damning things, but, you know, he made it seem like he really, really cared about Summer. He made it seem like he adored her and knew her very, very well, but it, he, how could he? He was only there for even a month. I mean, you wouldn't know everything about this little girl. He also said that Don showered with Summer and that Candace knew about it. And when Candace was asked about that, she said, no, absolutely not. Don never showered with Summer. Um, he showered with the boys. Uh, you know, things like that. Um, so I'm not really sure, but I just know that there are a lot of things that still don't add up and I don't really know. I find it very weird that as soon as Summer went missing, Jose skipped town. No one saw him for nine months. I feel like he took that nine months to get himself together, to get his story together, to be ready for the press and police. And I feel like maybe he had something to do with it. I feel like Ernie, Max Shell definitely had something to do with it. I feel like maybe Andrew Hiltz knows what happened. Um, it's just too weird. It's like that group of people is very concerning to me. And Jose is in on that group. I find, you know, all of them suspect. Nobody knows what's going on. So everyone's a suspect till no one is. So you know what I mean? I don't know. I just pray to God that we find summer. It's just not always hopeful. You know, you, you try so hard to stay positive and be like, okay, today's the day, today's the day. But then you have more and more people that come out with stupid shit that you know makes no sense. And it makes you feel like, okay, maybe there's something very, 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 very sinister going on here. Everybody's in on it. I just feel like this many people can't not know what's happening. And, you know, it, it was also said that Jose was on the Wells property the day that Summer went missing. Now, some people will say no, some people say yes. You don't know. It seems like everybody was on that damn hill that day, you know? And who knows? I mean, there's so many different stories that Candace has recanted and, you know, like, okay, so say it was said that she was planting flowers. Um, Summer, Candace, and Grandice were all planting flowers and that, you know, Grandis went and took a nap and, and then it was said Candace took a nap and then it was said you know, I mean, it's like, what story do we really go off of here? Do we even really know an, any type of account for that day? No, not really. You know what I mean? And that's what's so concerning to me. So I just pray to God that we find Summer. And um, I don't know what's up with this Jose, but I don't believe shit he has to say. I feel like they're all in on it. And, you know, it's like they all play a role. They all have a part in this, whether they think they do or not. And one lie or one little white lie or not saying what you know is keeping us away from finding Summer. So little things do make a big difference and the truth is needed. We have to find her. 
And I think a lot of people just know they're going to jail or maybe like a big organization will go down for, you know, being involved or, or helping pull off this disappearance. I have no idea, but it just doesn't feel right. And I just pray to God that another whole month or a whole year or 10 more months doesn't go by before we find out what really happened to Summer and maybe she is still alive. And so every day is a day further away from her. So Summer Moon Utah Wells was five years old at the time she disappeared from her family home in Rogersville, Tennessee on June 15th, 2021. Um, she was said to have just vanished from the property and and, and by the looks of it that's going to be kind of hard to do um it's up a dead end and it's, it's a a steep hill and you wouldn't even unless you knew it was there you wouldn't know that that led up to that it just looks like you know a road a little road going up a hill it's very narrow the people especially the wells house where it's located can see everybody coming from the, a window out of the back of their house. They can see people coming up that road. And supposedly there was a lot of dogs on the property. It just doesn't seem possible. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen at the end of the day, but um, I just pray whoever is responsible for her disappearance or her unhappiness is held held accountable every one of them i don't even care who it is they all need to be held accountable this is a little girl's life we're talking about it's important it matters so that is all i just wanted to give you guys another little update i'm sorry i have like my mom took my daughter today and so i have a gonna do a couple of videos i'm like i'm not gonna change i'm just gonna keep whatever so i appreciate you guys for watching um, please like, please subscribe, please share if you haven't done so already. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you so, so very much. And stay safe, stay blessed, and cherish the simple things. Summer, we are going to find you, baby. Any information in her whereabouts, any information at all, please call 1-800-TBI-FIND and leave a message. Hopefully, it leads to our baby. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.